Susan. I urgently need to have a conversation with you about something very important. Please, if you happen to see these messages that I'm sending you, I beg you to get back to me as soon as possible. It's very serious. I heard a rumor that you were planning to resign from your position at my dad's company. Is that really the truth? I suppose this means that I've finally won. That I won't have to endure the sight of your hideous face anymore. You poor little orphan, who has no one to take care for you. Laura, it is just so wonderful to receive your messages too. It's not like you had any friends or allies at the office anyway. I bet everyone will be overjoyed to see you leave. Haha. <laughs> well, this is the first time that I'm hearing anything about losing my job. Actually, I have a suspicion that this was something to do with those documents that were causing so much trouble earlier though, right? Oh, you mean I'm the one who gets to break the news to you? This makes it even more satisfying. Consider this your notice, that you're being kicked out and left jobless. You really should have been more careful with your work laptop, you know. I mean, sending customers those inappropriate emails? What else did you expect? And the way you ruined your precious fountain pen that your parents gifted you? Oh, you really aren't a responsible person now, are you? Oh, wait a second. I just remembered I was the one who made all of that happen. I don't understand, Laura. Why would you want to do something like this to me? Because you're nothing but a pathetic little orphan. And even seeing your face is enough to ruin my day. I really don't think that that's a good reason to have done any of that personally. Well, I don't care what you think. Since my plan worked out now, you're going to be out of here forever. Back to the streets with you, you little rat. Wait a second. I think I know what this is about. Now, you do know that I'm not actually being fired, right? What are you talking about? I heard that you're going to be leaving the office. It has to be because of all my scheming that I did to ruin your life and your career, right? No, sorry. I'm leaving the office. But it's only because I got a better offer from a different company. I'm leaving for a new office where I'm starting a new job. I'll be out of your hair by the next week, though. Don't worry. Wait, I don't understand. You're not serious about this, are you? Yep, totally serious. Anyway, if this is all that you wanted to talk to me about, I hope I've cleared up any misunderstandings that you might have had. I have to keep packing up my stuff, so I'm going to need to go now. Hold on a second, what? This can't be happening. I refuse to believe it. You mean to tell me that some pathetic little orphan like you was offered a better job? You won't get away with this. Run or you like, but you can't escape who you really are. Hey, Susan. How have you been doing lately? I feel like it's been such a long time since I've heard anything from my long-lost sister. Hey, Nicholas. It's really nice to hear from you. I'm doing well, thank you for asking. Just keeping on with the usual business. How are things going with you? Well, actually, I have some really big news that I wanted to share with you. Oh, really? What could it be? I'm going to get married. Isn't that exciting? I'm so happy. And you're one of the first people that I've told. Really? You're engaged? Oh, that's so exciting to hear. Congratulations! That's amazing news, Nicholas. Thank you so much. I'm really happy that you're excited for me. I can't believe it's all really happening. I just really can't believe that my tiny little brother is getting married. It's enough to bring a tear to my eye. Tiny? Come on now. What's that about? I'm taller than you, you know? <laughs> But then again, I guess I am seven years younger than you. And I guess I do have to admit that I was always a shrimp until a couple of years into high school when I shot up. <laughs> I'm sorry, it really was just a joke. I guess it's just that whenever I think of you, 
I can't help but remember you as my tiny baby brother that I had when we were in the orphanage. What do you mean by that? I mean, when you were three years old, you were adopted and got to leave the orphanage. That was the last time I saw you for a long, long time. Meanwhile, I was there until I turned 18 and graduated from high school. Then, I was out on my own. And to think that by the next time we met, you were in college doing an internship at the company that my husband owns. When he was telling me about some of the new interns that arrived, he mentioned your name. And I realized that he was talking about you. I was so excited to finally get to meet you again. And when I finally saw you, you were all grown up. It still makes me really emotional to think about, actually. Aw, oh, sis. Now we've been through a lot on our own. But I really am happy that we're back in each other's lives now. Me too, Nicholas. So, I take it that you've already told your parents about your engagement then, right? Yeah, I sent them a voice message telling them the big news. They were really busy with a meeting or something and couldn't pick up the phone. But they said that they would start looking into wedding preparations. And so who is the lucky girl getting to marry my little brother? I would love to hear everything about her. Where did you two meet? What's her job? What's her name? Whoa, just hold on a second there. Let me send you a picture to start with, and we can take those questions one at a time. Wait. This is your fiancé? Yeah. Why? Is there something wrong with her? What's up with that response? This girl wouldn't happen to be named Laura, would she? Well, that was either an incredible guess, or you must know her. I'm going to guess it's the latter though, right? Yeah, I do know her actually. She's the daughter of the company president at the last job that I had. I knew her the whole time that I was working there. Wow, what a small world. It's actually so crazy. Actually, Laura and I have been friends for a really long time, and I've known her since elementary school. We've basically been together in some shape or form throughout all of our lives. Although I never thought that we would actually end up together like a couple. Actually, if I'm being honest, it was our parents who arranged for us to get married. Hold on a second. Your parents set you up with an arranged marriage? I know that is weird and super old-fashioned and all, but Laura's family and my parents are all very rich, and I guess that's just how they wanted to do things. Besides, since Laura and I were such close friends already, I guess it just made sense for them to push us together. I think that both sets of parents were worried about someone trying to marry their children just to get their hands on the family fortune and this was their way of working around that. I see. I guess when you have that much money, you can't just get married like normal people do. There's a lot more to take into account there. But of course, it's not like Laura and I haven't been dating at all before this. We've been together officially for about a year now, and we also agreed that getting married to each other is something that we want to do. Right. Well... As long as you're putting your emotions first in all this. After all, this is a really big life decision. And I just want to make sure that you remember to take into account your own feelings. Of course. Yeah, I know it's weird, but this is really something that I want to do. Also, both our families are going to be having dinner together soon. And my dad suggested that you come along since we're back in each other's lives now. I'll send you the details once they've all been worked out, but I'd love to see you there. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Well, hello there, Susan. I must admit that I'm quite astonished to see you sitting at the dinner table with us this evening. Yeah, I can imagine how you must have felt because I was feeling the same way, to be honest with you. I mean... Who would have ever thought that you were the older sister of Nicholas? My fiancé. Sometimes this world really does seem to be too small for all of us, doesn't it? Oh, you're absolutely right about that. 
here I was, thinking that I had left so much of my past behind me and move on with my life. And yet... Anyway, Nicholas and I have been in touch for a while now, and we meet up every once in a while. I guess that from now on, there might be some occasions where the three of us are together. So, I hope that we can get along well. If not for our own sake, then at least for Nicholas's sake, right? What on earth are you talking about? You think you have any place in this marriage at all? You were abandoned at the orphanage while your brother was adopted by a loving family. You're not part of his family, and you're certainly not part of mine. As far as I'm concerned, you're just a nobody. By the way, I also heard that you had an older brother. Is that true? Yes, I do have an older brother. But when our parents died, he was already 18 years old and working. So he didn't go into the orphanage with us. And Nicholas was adopted out of there when he was just three years old. So I was the only one of my siblings who stayed in the orphanage until I turned 18. And then I left. So even though all three of you are related by blood, you've basically gotten to spend no time with either of them? That means you have no connection to your brothers. So it also means that you're not going to be invited to our wedding. You can't be serious about this. That's just ridiculous, Laura. I'm sorry, but I just don't think we have room to invite strangers to our special day. The wedding is going to be all about Nicholas and I. And I certainly don't want someone like you interfering and making a mess of things. Do you understand? I wasn't going to interfere with anything, Laura. But I did really want to be there to get to witness my little brother getting married. And I'm telling you, just the thought of you being there makes me not want to have a wedding at all. So get it through your thick skull. It's not happening. I simply refuse to have some little street rat running around and ruining my wedding. Laura, I really think that you're taking this whole thing just a little bit too far. And I don't think that I'm taking it far enough. Since you don't seem to be getting the message. I don't care if Nicholas begs you to be at the wedding. I want you to come up with some excuses as to why you won't be there. Hey sis, I just wanted to double check with you about the wedding. Are you really sure that there's no way that you're going to be able to make it no matter what? You know that it would really mean the world to me if you could somehow find a way to fit it into your schedule. I know, Nicholas. I really do wish that I could be there for you as well, trust me. But it's just that something unexpected has come up, and I just really don't know if my husband and I are going to be able to make it there on time. I think it'll just be too difficult with everything else that's been going on in our lives. Well, I understand that you must be really busy, but can I at least ask what is preventing you from coming? Well... I suppose this is as good a time to tell you as any that I've entered my second trimester. Your second trimester? Are you trying to tell me that you're pregnant right now? That's right. It's actually my second pregnancy, but yeah. I had no idea! That's amazing! It's such a huge news to me! I really am sorry I didn't tell you sooner. I just figured that you would be so busy with all the wedding preparations that I didn't want to burden you with anything else to worry about until it was over. Burden? Are you kidding? I think this is wonderful news. I'm so happy for you and your husband. Well, then if you're dealing with that, I completely understand why you wouldn't be able to attend the wedding. I just wish that you would have told me sooner. But please, keep me updated about this, okay? I'm so excited to meet my new niece or nephew. Of course, Nicholas. I'll be sure to do that. And thank you so much for being so understanding and supportive. I really appreciate it. So I take it that you finally managed to convince Nicholas that you wouldn't be attending my wedding, right? But you know, I was thinking... I want to see where you live and where you're going to raise this baby of yours. 
I expected some kind of rundown shack that was barely even standing. But I had no idea you lived in a nice house. Laura, I really would appreciate it if you stopped trying to bully me all the time. It is getting to be just a little old. And I have other things I should be worrying about. Excuse me? What did you just say to me? You've seriously got some nerve talking to me like that. Did you forget who I am and who you are? Well, you started it, so I think it's more than fair that I should ask you to stop. I mean, we're both adults, and I'd hope we just talk this out. But I know that it's you who's been coming to my house all the time and leaving all those creepy messages in my mailbox. Not only that, but you graffitied the fence I have around my house, too. What on earth prompted you to do that? Like I said, you've got some real nerve trying to complain to me about that. Just who do you think you are being so poor and living in a mansion? You think you're better than me just because you have such a nice house? Consider it my way of putting you back down where you belong. Sorry, you committed vandalism because you were jealous of my house? Am I understanding that right? It's all part of my grand plan to get you kicked out of the neighborhood. Soon there's gonna be rumors flying around about why it's only your house that gets targeted and then people are gonna see you as a threat to the whole neighborhood. I really don't think that's how this is going to work at all. If anything, you're just setting yourself up to get in some really big trouble. Me? Get in trouble? Are you forgetting who my family is? Of course. I wouldn't expect a nobody like you to understand just who they are dealing with. You really must think the world revolves around you though. If you think that anyone is going to care about what I did to your house, I can do whatever I want. There's nothing you can do about it. Besides, you should be more concerned about your baby than your house. You'll need to find a new place to live soon, don't you think? Because I'm not going to stop until you move far away that I won't ever have to think about you ever again. And don't even bother trying to tattle on me to Nicholas. I know that you don't have any proof. So there's no way that he would even believe you. I don't have any proof, you say? Hmm, that's funny. Because my security camera I have around the house shows quite clearly that it's you doing all of this. Wait, what? What do you mean? I mean, the cameras I have under the eaves of my house, as well as the doorbell camera. They're all on automatic sensors and they pick up when someone steps on my property. Hold on a second. You have cameras all over your house? Did you really think that you were going to get away with all this so easily? No, you have to be joking. No, I'm not kidding you at all. I have video evidence of you vandalizing my property and harassing me, and I'm not afraid to show it to the police or to Nicholas or to anyone else who needs to see it. You wouldn't dare ruin my reputation and my relationship with Nicholas. <laughs> I would dare, and I will, unless you stop bothering me and leave me alone. You have no right to treat me like this. Just because you're insecure and jealous, you need to grow up and get over yourself. How dare you talk to me like that? You have no idea who you're messing with. You think you can blackmail me with some videos? Well, think again. I'm not going to let you get away with this. I'm going to make you pay for this. One way or another. Is that a threat? Because it sounds like a threat. And I don't take threats lightly. You better watch your back, Laura. Because you don't know what I'm capable of. Oh, please. You don't scare me at all. You're nothing but a pathetic little worm. You don't belong in this neighborhood, or even in this city. You're a waste of space and a waste of time. And I'm going to make sure everyone knows it. Susan, are you there? I just want to say that I'm so, so sorry. Nicholas, hey there. What is this about? What are you sorry for? Well, I heard it all from my boss, your husband that is. He told me that Laura was coming to your house and vandalizing it, and leaving creepy messages in your mailbox and doing all kinds of horrible things. I just wanted to say that I'm so sorry for not knowing about this before. But also, 
I wanted to tell you that the wedding is off. You're canceling your wedding? Nicholas, are you sure about this? Of course I am. I've talked to my parents as well as Laura's, and we all agree that it's for the best. And if Laura is trying to pin whatever happens to her next on you, just know that you don't have anything to do with it at all. Susan, get out here right now. Can't you hear me ringing your doorbell? Come out and face me right this instance. I'm not going to leave until we've talked face to face. I'm serious, Susan. I can stand here all day long. If you want me to get out of your hair, you better come out here right now. Oh, hey there, Laura. What seems to be the problem? You are going to come outside, and you and I are going to my wedding venue right now. Sorry? What is this about? I think I'm a little confused. Ugh! Shut up and come with me! I mean, please come with me to my wedding. I really want you to accompany me there. Your wedding? I'm still just not getting it, sorry. Please, I'm begging you! I'm sorry, but you can ring the doorbell all you like. No one is going to come out. I'm at my in-law's house right now, so... You mean to tell me that you're not even home? Yeah, I'm at my husband's parents' house right now. In fact, it was Nicholas who suggested that I go there to be safe from you for a while. Tell me where they live. Tell me where you are right now. I'll go and see you there. Laura, I just thought you should know that I got a text from one of my neighbors. They said that there's a crazy lady in a wedding dress who's leaving her car idling in front of my house and screaming to herself. That wouldn't happen to be you, would it? Of course it's me. Who else would it be? Now tell me where you are. Isn't it kind of difficult moving around in that big dress, though? Just tell me where you are so that I can take you to my wedding. I'm not going to get married unless you're there. Now hurry up and tell me where you are. Sorry, but Nicholas told me there wasn't even going to be a wedding. Well, there will be if I have you to force Nicholas to get back together with me. That makes me want to go with you even less, Laura. Besides, I already know that your wedding plans are cancelled and that both you and Nicholas's parents know about that. So I don't really see what the point of going with you would be if there wasn't even going to be a wedding. There will be a wedding. Do you know why your parents agreed to cancel the wedding? What are you talking about? Well, my husband signed a contract with your father's company. And now the two are very close business partners. So when my husband threatened to end the deal because of what you were doing to us, your father immediately agreed to cancel the wedding. Otherwise, he would have lost some serious money. Oh my gosh, no! That can't be right! You're lying to me! Actually, there's one more thing. You remember that I have an older brother too, right? Well. He's actually the largest shareholder of your mom's cosmetic business. I actually didn't know about this until recently, but he also agreed to pull out his business if the wedding wasn't stopped. So you mean that your husband and your brother also have connections with my family? No! What are the chances of that? And why are they such huge stakeholders in both of my parents' companies? Are you telling me that my whole family would be poor if I married Nicholas? It certainly sounds that way, yes. But that can't be right. You're a nobody. I don't know why you think the circumstances of my birth should control how I live the rest of my life. 
that just doesn't make any sense at all. You should be more concerned about your own life and how you're ruining it by being so obsessed with Nicholas. He doesn't love you, Laura, and nothing you do will ever change that. And so, Nicholas and Laura's wedding never came to be. And I had my second child without any trouble. As for Laura, she faced the consequences of her actions. My husband sued her for all the damage and distress she caused us. She was ordered by the court to pay a hefty fine to cover the cleaning cost, as well as compensate us for emotional damage. On top of that, both Nicholas and her parents agreed to make her pay for all the wedding expenses, which were canceled without refund. In the end, she had to pay a staggering amount of over $1 million. And instead of offering any sympathy or support, Laura's parents disowned her. By the time this was all over, they only saw her as a huge threat to their fortunes. I hear that Laura is trying to survive on her own now, but it will be a long time before she truly learns what it means to earn her way through life. <laughs>